Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm Damo, and on today's video, we're going to show you how we went about replacing the catalytic converter on bank number one. We only managed to do one in this video on the 2011 Lotus Evora S. Okay, before we get started on this video, please, please, please don't forget if you haven't done already, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon, then you'll get notified whenever we do another video. We haven't had a Lotus video up for quite a while. Largely, we don't have the car. This is sort of old footage, which I thought might be useful to anybody who's uh, trying to replace the catalytic converter on a V6. But there is other content on the channel on cars, mostly sports cars in general BMW M3, Porsche 911, Lotus Evora, Audi A4, Audi TT, etc. Go back, check those videos, and tell us what you think. Cheers. Problem. Right, so regular viewers to the channel who've sort of followed the Lotus Evora story will know that I had a problem with the catalytic converter on a track day actually, not this particular track day, this was Cadwell Park a year or two later actually. On the Goodwood track day, the catalytic converter on bank one disintegrated, spat out the exhaust, uh, caused uh, I suppose problem number one in terms of needing to fix it. What I did was purchase some second-hand catalytic converters. That sounds quite dodgy, it wasn't. They were in really, really good condition. I had a go at fitting them myself. This video will show you the how-to guide that I put together at the time on replacing the catalytic converter on bank number one. That is the one at the back of the engine closest to the boot. There will be another video following up on the slightly more <laughs> unsuccessful attempt to replace the catalytic converter on bank number two at the, towards the front of the engine, just behind the passenger seats. So stay tuned for that. It didn't quite work out when I ended up having to take it to a garage. But anyway, I thought the footage was useful anyway. Sit back, enjoy the video, and hopefully it'll be of some use to you. Cheers. It's always a good idea to um, disconnect the battery or disconnect the negative lead. So the battery for the low support is behind the carpet. Now what a lot of people do for ease of access is there's this plastic battery panel. It's held on with one, two, three uh, little bolts uh, into the work there. I've already popped those off. Take that off and you can see the battery there behind. Now what a lot of people do is actually they mount the plastic on the outside and cut the carpet out for a kind of ease of access because Lotus have all been sort of harder than it is. A lot of people sort of don't use them every day um, and like to put trickle charges on them. So that's uh, kind of a good idea. I might think about doing that one day. Anyway, uh, you're going to need, um, we've piped it on already, a 10 mil socket. Loosen that um, negative off, uh, pop it off. So then you've got. Uh, no power going to anywhere and you're not going to drain the battery which means you won't be able to start it and it'll just cause all sorts of problems later because you can see we're going to be working with the boot open and with the boot open you've got these little uh, upside down you've got these little lights which will just drain the battery so uh, pop that negative terminal off take the power away from the car but remember the boot is electric there is a release cord under the passenger seats but uh, if you don't want to be messing around with that uh, just make sure you don't slam the boot properly after you've disconnected the battery. We won't. We'll keep this bit of carpet here and what have you uh, to stop the boot shutting completely. That battery, by the way, I am in the process of replacing it. I bought a new Bosch one. Can you see? It doesn't quite fit and I'm not convinced that it's doing really the job that it needs to to keep the, uh, the Evora going. It's a banner. They're supposed to be all right. Um, but it just seems on a bit on the small side, really. I'd rather get one uh, that is probably the correct size with the, with the power. So I've actually bought, um, for reference, the Bosch S5007 to go in here, uh, which should uh, just give all the starting power that this car needs. Okay, so we're under the <clears throat> this is the bottom of the Lotus Evora. That is the rear. Uh, so this is the front of the car. Um, so this here is the catalytic converter 
coming down from um, the back of the engine. This is coming down from bank one, okay? So it comes down here and along here, and that's where you've got your secondary oxygen sensor. If we, when we try and get this out up at the top, we'll see, uh, hopefully anyway, uh, the other oxygen sensor connected to it. And this is the bit we're gonna replace. So there's two bolts here, which you can get to once you remove the under panel, um, get those off. Um, then you've got to do the stuff at the top. Uh, yeah, and then here, along here, we've got the pipe and it goes up. Okay, so front of the car is that way, both under here. You can see that is going up to the front of the engine, and that's where it comes into the collectors there. So you can just see. This bit here is the cat to the front of the engine. That is bank two. So if you're getting a problem with your catalytic converter on bank two, um, it's this one. <clears throat> this one is surrounded, as you can see, by heat shields and bits and bobs. That's all going to have to come off, and that comes off through the rear of the car, the access panel, which we are going to try and do. But we're going to get some um, <clears throat> something to uh, hopefully spray on these bolts to try and loosen them off. Right, we want to get the uh, header off from the exhaust. It's, it's under there somewhere. How do you get that off? First of all, obviously, take your engine cover off if you've got one. Take a little hand, pop buttons pop up. You can see under there, it just clips in there, and then it pulls right out. Then we've got to get that boot carpet off, reveal an access hole and a heat shield and get in there. We'll do that now. Okay, so with the carpet out of the way, just kind of pulled out of the way. Actually, that looks like there's a Velcro strip here. I guess I'll stick the carpet on, so this bit of the Velcro probably should be on the back of the carpet. Anyway, it isn't. Get yourself a little 8mm spanner. You've got one, two, three, six 8mm bolts. Let's whiz through and get those off now. And that's some sort of adhesive there, just securing that in place. And then you've got a heat shield behind. Okay, so with the heat shield exposed, you've got uh, one, two, three, four, eight mil bolts to get off as well. Let's get it. Right, I don't think you can see. These eight mil bolts clip into clips behind. So just be careful that those little clips don't fall away when you're unscrewing, okay? Okay, last nut. We've got to be careful here. Um, we don't, let's get that off. We don't let the heat shield drop down or disappear into the heat. It should come out here. And there we go. Okay, so from the top of the engine, you've got three bolts you need to get hold of. So we're still in the boot area. Watch this, because I just cut my hand open on it. So I suggest wearing a pair of gloves to protect your hands, because you're doing bolts and this stuff's really, really sharp. Um, 12 mil nut there, 12 mil one there, and bizarrely, focus on there, there's a 13 mil one there. This is holding a bit of heat shield on, I don't know if you can see here. So the same underneath, I believe. There's another 13 under there, 12, 12. You're gonna need, Ideally, a long something like this to get on there, get those 12s off. Now, that's okay, but this one you've got the oxygen sensor in the way. Now, if you've ever tried to remove an oxygen sensor, you know what an apps ball like they are. Now, I've got a special oxygen sensor bolt spanner thing, but even that wasn't for um, getting this off so. Kind of had to do a little bit of jiggery pokery to get this 12 mil off, but anyway, did manage it. The bolts actually sit on the edge of the car, they all came off nicely. So you can see they've stopped the final one. Let's get that off, make sure you don't drop it and lose it. Now, what I'm going to do is I've just unclipped. So here, there is a cable tie. Here, there's a cable tie. I've just unclipped that. So we'll get rid of those and unplug the oxygen sensor which just goes in here you can see the coil packs here so yep oxygen sensor follow the wire i don't pull out the whole one unplug this one okay just 
just quickly then, um, this was all bunched up with this wire, these wires here, um, with a cable tie. Again, to get to this, to slide the oxygen sensor off, because you've got to push this down to release it. Um, I think you push it down, yeah, we'll do that in a sec. Um, but just don't cut that cable tie. You're going to need some more cable ties, basically, to put all this back together when you're done. Okay, so push down on this bit here, and then, which I've already done, this thing should just come apart like that. There you go. That's it. Oxygen sensor is free. All the bolts off the top are done. We've got to do the bolts underneath now. Okay, so we're back under the car. You can see the diffuser there. So this is the head pointing towards the rear of the car. So we're looking at the back of the engine. This is the underneath of the cat. So we've got a bolt here and a bolt here. So we've already started to loosen these off. Get some fluid on them to try and loosen them off. Now they should be, I believe, this is a 14 mil thing. They should be 14 mil. Um, for some reason, I've got one 14 and then on the other side, maybe someone's been in here before, this one's actually uh, slightly bigger. It's a 17 for some reason. Anyway, get both of those bolts off. Under here, you've got quite a bit of leverage. So with a slight um, extension on your um, wrench, you should be able to get them off fairly easy. That is 17 now, it's just unscrewing nicely. Well, after much wrangling, we got this cat off. Okay, can you see in there? What can you see in there? That is where there should be a catalytic converter. You can see the oxygen sensor down there. There is no catalytic converter mesh in there at all. It's destroyed the lock. This is the second hand one we're putting on. You can see, full of uh, catalytic converter. Okay, hindsight has told me that if you fit in a new manifold and it's already got an oxygen sensor like this one has, which is used, it's better to take them off because um, they get in the way when you try and fit them. You've got all this wire and stuff. Um, it's, it's better to get them off. Now, the way we get oxygen sensors off, I have learned, is you need a 22 mil spanner on there and you need a breaker bar of some description. I'm using this worktop counter leg that I have spare. Um, so you pop your, your spanner on there, this will be interesting, and then you get some leverage and try and get it off. Okay, we have our manifold rested. There we go, it's loose, it's off. Okay, so, a lot of wiggling, getting the cat down from up there. So again, we're looking towards the back of the car. What you've got to do, uh, you've got this heat shield in the way, which is a bugger. Um, wiggling it out was an absolute pain to get past the collector tubes here. So what I did was um, unbolt the collector tube from the, the back bank here, 14 mil bolt either side, unbolt that, that will give you um, some fl use this flex pipe. This is a human new exhaust, is all original. Um, you've got this flex pipe, you can move this around a bit, you must be careful with it. Um, there's also, as you can see, uh, looking in here, right, there you go. See that black lead there? So that's you've got to be careful of that as well. So that got a bit scratched dropping the, the cat out. But um, the lesson learned here. It would have been a heck of a lot easier dropping the whole cat out um, had 
there been um, no oxygen sensor in it. So um, it kept getting caught um, here on uh, this part of the exhaust here, which is an absolute pig. Anyway, um, good news is out finally. We've taken the oxygen sensor off the replacement one. Um, we're just going to try and offer it up in position and then uh, probably leave, leave it for now and then bolt it up uh, later. But once again, what I would recommend is before you do that, unscrew the oxygen sensor because it will slide down a lot more easier without that big oxygen sensor sticking out. So what I'm doing here, this is our used header. It's going to go on the head and there's the cat in there. But I'm just smoothing off the surface. This is obviously a used cat. Okay, so this is the collector pipe coming in from, there we go, this is the collector pipe which we've loosened off from the bank at the back of the engine and also loosened off, you can't see it there, for the one at the front of the engine. So it's hanging on this flexi pipe and you kind of need to do that um, to get this new, this is a new second hand cap, mounted up here. So you've got this drive shaft here. So you've kind of got a, I've just got it in position. Zoom out a bit, you can sort of see. So that's how it connects to this pipe here. This bit connects to the header, which is up there and the bolts are in there. So it's quite hard to show that on the video, but I'm just gonna wiggle it around and offer it up and put it up there. Okay, so now, that was a little bit fiddly, but we kind of managed it. You can see, there is our replacement. You can see the part numbering on there. And it's just slotted on nicely onto the, the bolts on the, the engine there. So we're just going to put the bolts on, three at the top, three at the bottom, and then there's another heat shield here. We did this without um, the oxygen sensor. You see the hole there plugged in. Um, it plugs in up there. Um, we did that because it's easier to wiggle in and put in position without that oxygen sensor in. So we can just screw in another oxygen sensor when we're nearly done. Can you see that? Yeah, there you go. Just there, I've put the bolts on loose. You notice the one in the middle, the actual screw came out, but that's okay because we just screw it back in. I'm putting them on loose because I'm going to adjust and fit in the collector tube at the bottom. So. Just leave it loose fitting for now. We'll get those, those bolts on. You can just see there. Okay. Okay, so we've tightened the bolts up around the top of the header. And now we're just tightening the bolts. We've actually got new bolts here uh, where the uh, to converter connects to the collector tubes at the bottom. Two, whatever these are, 14 mil bolts. Yeah, the ones that had someone had wasn't using the right bolt, they were just a nut in the bolt. <clears throat> there should be a, uh, a nut welded on the other side of this, and then you bolt and screws into it. And then one way on the other side, you can see that. Okay, back at the top of the car then, you've got to remember to screw in your oxygen sensors, put them right there. So that isn't the oxygen sensor that you can see, that is. Is a oxygen sensor bolt, um, 22 mil. It goes on there. You can see it's kind of shaped so it covers the wire, um, and you get a quarter inch drive on there. Just tighten that up. You don't want it too tight because if it goes wrong, you never get the thing out. And then the connectors up there. We'll do that in a sec. But what we also have in here, on the light, is this little bit of heat shield here, uh, which goes around here and attaches on the two. Um, end bolts down here, so I'm going to fill around with that. this 
catalytic converter replacement video. If you liked it, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell icon, then you'll get notified whenever we do another video. And don't forget, comment in the bottom, tell us what you think. Have a look at the other videos on the channel. Cheers.